and this is very and this is and this is very and this is just be chant this is very and this is just be chant this is very and this is just be chant hello again how you guys doing today and um, how did you find the um uh edition of branded that we did on logos you know that was a second um dive into logos not quite a deep dive but um we we did um do some work concerning logos with a, a subject matter expert uchan oro i i learned quite a few things and um, we're going to learn some more but today we're going to talk about uh, logos and lines because they all kind of blending together. What kind of lines I tell you? But I want to share a few, um, let's say, parting thoughts about logos. And those parting thoughts are really from things that other people have said. So I'll read them up with me. Um, one of them by Saul Sander says, the strongest logos tell simple stories. Now, if you were online with us on brand dates last week you'll remember that one of the logos actually the two logos that we we looked at apart from our julia jack's consulting logo was a logo for keza foods and also the logo for um, the baby lounge and um, what uche said was that the logos in themselves told a complete story it was a convoluted logo so a logo doesn't have to be all difficult and uh, convoluted the other thing was that from Paul Ryan was a logo doesn't sell directly, it, it identifies. So a logo, if you remember early on, I mean, I would really encourage you to go back and, and watch the early branded editions because what we did was really to try and lay the foundation. And I said, a logo can be like, for, for some of us, like those marks those marks that show our ethnicity where we belong so it's not really so much ethnicity but really where we belong so it identifies you it's a thing of beauty really you know and um, then what, what's the purpose of identification the purpose of identification for us who brand to sell is really that People see you, people recognize you, people feel a certain positive way about you, they feel a certain emotional way about you, they fall in love with what you are, so that logo represents the totality of what you mean to them. So it identifies you and people see the logo, they may not be able to read the name, especially in places where people are not very literate, but they may not be able to read the name, but they can see the mark and say yes. I know this one. I trust it. A good one is Coca-Cola. Anywhere in the world, you see Coca-Cola, you'll know, at least in that group of family of drinks, I know this one. <laughs> this one I can trust, you know. So if you are really dying of thirst or you see a bottle of water, and they said, from the Coca-Cola um, bottling uh, factory or plant or whatever or for the family you will feel a certain level of assurance that's what that logo that name you know c comes to mean to us and another thing that Uche said to us last week was that it's a codified visual signature of a brand if you think about your signature a signature is it just represents you even if, like your initials so there is a certain way you write there's a certain way you present yourself in a graphic form, but this way is in a visual form. So when your signature starts changing, and for those of us as we get older, yes, it does change from time to time. So when your signature starts changing, you also have to go and verify that this is indeed your signature. You have to do that legally. Well, a logo can be a critical part of a brand in many places. For instance, take Apple. Once you see an apple with a chunk bitten out of it, if I even just see an apple, for those who know and those who are in that in that um, market, part of the consumers, you would know that that's an app, that's apple. I think it's so simple that it's brilliant. You know, if you were to get, for instance, a, a a product that is passing itself up 
off as apple and the apple is full you you yourself will know that that is not full apple we are talking about we're talking about taking a chunk out of creativity so that's um, as much as i believe i want to say right now about apples and logos and chunks out of apples but we will come back to this at another point in time the other thing i want to talk to you about main thing i want to talk to you about this week is lines lines the different things when we talk about lines um i started off my life as a teacher perhaps that's why i like to teach but i also moved very strongly into the world of advertising as a copywriter and um, i know i used to sweat over writing headlines so we have headlines we have different things headlines and that would be a cause for a different reason. But we have strap lines and strap lines or payoff lines or tag lines are what I want to talk about. Tag lines are not the same things as slogans. The difference is a little bit different. You no know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, but there is a difference. But for you now, what you need to know is your strap line. Or your payoff line what is a payoff line or a strap line it is a long-term sentence phrase it can be registered as intellectual property and it sums up the essence of the brand it sums up all the promises it sums up the values it should it should be able to stand the test of time and should be short enough to be memorable and very very catchy very very catchy i remember years ago as a, a rookie copywriter and um, we worked with um sua motos i I'm, I'm not sure they're around anymore you know they may be so don't quote me you know so we worked with sua motos and um their sua they their um, slogan at the time was tomorrow starts today and I thought that was a bit, it was one of those lines that I, I felt as a rookie I should have written. I really loved that tagline, you know. So your tagline will be tested over time. It'll be tested to see, does it really have those timeless values that you claim to have? And um, if it doesn't, you need to go back to the drawing board. If you're saying to people, um, for instance, what, what does Apple say? Apple say, think different, and all of a sudden they're thinking the same as everybody else. They're doing things the same as everybody else. Then they have to go back to the drawing board and rethink their strap line. So if it doesn't work, like I said, look at it again. Things may have changed. Remove it, reflect on it, retool and come back even stronger than before. So I'd like to run through a few um, strap lines that I believe have stood the test of time. One of them, I'll just say, because you're worth it. Because you're worth it. Because you are worth it. And all women who, I think of all ages, who use certain facial products will know that that's L'Oreal. Nike, do I need to even say it? I don't need to say it, just, you just go do it, right? Nike has actually improved to the point, has used this and entrenched it into its DNA, so much so that the current advertising for, for um, Nike doesn't even use that strap line anymore. You know, you just know it. Yeah. They just use the swoosh, and that's the power of branding and the power of consistently investing in branding. Apple, we already mentioned, think different. That's enough to say about Apple. BMW, and this one I've loved for ages, the ultimate driving machine. Now, they're probably, I'm not a car person, really, I'm not a car person, but there's a certain image it evokes in your in your head and when i see like bmws being battered i feel like oof that shouldn't happen to the ultimate um, driving machine it is not a car it's a driving machine i mean guys i'm sure you get it by now 
let's look at American Express. American Express used to say, don't leave home without it. But now they say, don't live life, L-I-V. Don't live life without it. Just like this, we are an indispensable part of your life. Toyota says, let's go places. Let's go places. We're on the move. We're not just selling a car. We're on the move. You know, Disneyland, the happiest place on your earth. So guess what? If you go to Disneyland and you have a bad experience, that already tests that strap line. You know, because that is a whole aggregation of their promise, their values, their principles, their voice. So if you go and see, for instance, Princess Jasmine, Princess Jasmine, um, is impolite to you, I mean, God forbid, but if she were to be impolite to your child or make her cry, oh, that strap line is already nullified. It's not going to happen, you know. Nokia, connecting people. Uh, I thought long and hard about adding Nokia because I wasn't sure whether Nokia is still connecting people. I think it's been, it may have been taken over by events and other, other, how would I call it, um, phones in its ilk. But um, yeah, there's a time when Nokia was connecting people. Is it still connecting people? You write me and tell me what you think. And there was one that I wrote sometime in, um, in the early 1990s. Yes, guys, I'm as young as you think I am. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. And it was for Guaranteed Trust Bank, called GT Bank now. And it was, wouldn't you rather bank with us? And I can, I think I must have come up with like 30 or 40 lines before that came. And I tell you, when you get it, you get it. You know it. And that, I just came up in my room. And it was one of several that I presented with a lot of tentativeness and then um, the client said that is it we want people to be able to it was open-ended so it's the kind of strap line that is a little bit um tongue-in-cheek a little bit um arrogant a little bit um how else would i say well it kind of invites you to say yes or no and when people start saying yes, you know that you're onto a good thing. And when people say no, or maybe, then you have to go back. Like I said, retool, reflect, take it down and look at it again. Nothing is cast in stone. Coca-Cola has had so many strap lines, so many. Still Coca-Cola, we're still drinking it. I mean, yeah, we yeah, are, you know. I'm not, but we are. I'm not for personal reasons, but we are. We are drinking. So that's um, how far I want to take you on lines, logos and lines. I hope this has been useful to you. How do I think it will be useful to you? Now, for growing businesses, and this is businesses of any size, as long as they're focused on doing things, the right things and doing things the right way, you'll find out that you have to build your brand. You do not just wake up one day and poof, you're the brand. Oh yes, you are a brand, but you are not the brand yet, you know. So the different things you have to go back, look at it again, see what you can do, see what you can tweak. And then um, we are here at Sweden Jacks Consulting to support you. And part of what we'll do, it's what we do. It's what we do. It's one of the things that I can probably stay up all night working with clients on, and um, we'll be glad to do that. So just hit us up on Julia Jackson Consulting, Facebook, um, Instagram, or YouTube. And you can also catch back um, previous um, airings of Branded on YouTube at Julia Jackson Consulting. And before I let you go, it would be really remiss of me not to tell you about um, our webinar, Brand Like a Rock Star. Brand Like a Rock Star is coming as a free webinar. It's coming up on May, 20, May 24th. It's a Wednesday from 6.30 p.m. West African time. It's going to be fun. We're going to have some guests with us as well. And um, you can come with your questions. 
and then we'll figure it all together. Take care and um, keep being the brand star that you are.